and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with with me I have a newcomer into the temple. The developer of Deployment, May God Save Our Souls, the World War II TTRPG we'll be discussing tonight. And the head honcho of Muddied Waters Games, the one and only Drew Norwood. How you doing tonight, man? Hey, hey. By the way, um, I think I did say this earlier. I prefer you by Luna. Not that other name. My uh, my apologies. I was not I was not aware. No, no, you're good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, I guess the fir the first place I'll st I'll start with is the humble beginnings, in a sense. So, walk me through your first mm -hmm. introduction to role playing games and what made it stick. Okay, my. Mm. Oh my God, this was so long ago. So. It was all the way back in elementary school. I found a bunch of random books in a friend's closet for D&D 4E. And, I mean, we tried to play it. We did our best. <laughs> but, yeah, it was mostly just Rule of Cool. And after that, I got into Critical Role more. Um, and got with my own personal group that actually was good at playing the games um and now it's half my life mm -hmm. yeah that, te that tends to be how this goes <laughs> yeah but what made you want to do a World War 2 TTRPG okay so, I have been studying just um, war history in general. It's been a big hobby of mine for a while. Um, but, how do I say this? I had a really good friend in Ukraine who passed away from the start of the war, like a weekend. And that just, and then there were so many people talking about, like, supporting the war or whatever, mm. how just ignoring human lives, how we're all just numbers in the war, right? It's not human lives being affected. That's what inspired me to make some sort of game showing we're all humans, we're all dying in this stupid shit. Mm -hmm. And with the, now with that in mind, you are you're using a um 3D6 and D and D20 um system. And yep, a mix of both. Now when it when it comes to the 3 when it comes to the 3D6 approach, is it a, is it a case where for for one your the modifier from your stat determines how many extra die that you ro that you roll. Indeed, yeah. And the second thing is, even if you're rolling extra dice, you're only keeping three. If I understand this correctly. Currently, yes. We have been thinking about changing that rule. We don't know quite yet. And. The, and this is a sum-based affair, not a success-based affair. You're trying to aim high against a difficulty rating. Yep. And that cer that certainly makes sense. And mm -hmm. with with that with that in with that in mind, when it comes to When it comes when it comes to the prospect of ro of rolling box cars or rolling snake eyes, is there any extra effect with that can happen with that? 
essentially is the is there an equivalent to criticals or botches is what I'm asking um so currently if you roll two ones or two sixes that's considered some sort of critical mm -hmm. um yeah yeah and Given that checks refer to refer to multiple um, successful rolls, is is it a case where you're rolling three d six multiple times, or is it a different approach? Do you restate the question? Uh, in the material you had sent me, it talks about um, about multiple successful rolls. Is it a case where you're rolling three d six each of those times and? And um, and chalking it as um, successful or not. So, out of combat, right? The rolls are success based. Whenever you're in combat, it switches to a song based. Mm -hmm. Um, no, it's a straight three d six roll, plus or minus whatever the character needs. So in in that in that kind of in that kind of situation, you like for for normal uh, non combat rolls, you'd be rolling three d six and seeing which one of how many of them are above a certain threshold. Yep, exactly. Right. And the other th the other thing I could I couldn't help but notice is is when you. Ex showed the example with the en with the engineer. Yep. Oh. What's up? Is is it a case where you ha where character creation is built is built around a series of archetypes? Yes. Yes, it is. Um. So, how do I explain this? It's less of a class system. It's more, you get a general role, a job to do, mm -hmm. and then your character can expand from that. So you could have a rifleman with a specialty in medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's why I said that's why I specifically said archetypes instead of class, because unfortunately, class yeah. has the connotation of you get of being being a bit locked in where you have cer where you have certain things that you get at certain thresholds whether it's level or xp or what have you um those are just the means that's not mm -hmm. important for this but that um you what you get out what you get out of advancing in a class is pre is preset versus an archetype which has leanings but isn't limited to that um uh, Yep, exactly. It's, it sounds like the approach you're doing is the archetype, where it doesn't necessarily find what you can do, but just what you're better at. Oh yes, one hundred percent. And um, it's called ranking up. It's pretty much leveling up. It's close enough. That and type of progression isn't formed with like an XP system. It's specifically what would realistically give you a higher rank in the military from your actions. It greatly encourages people to experiment with their characters, their skills, their trainings, and really push out there, you know? Be risky with their moves. Yeah. Um, I did see that the that on the engineer description, um, you have the, you have a advancement scheme that is referencing is referencing various ranks, whether it be E one or E or E four, and so and so on. Is that something that's going to be carried through with the other roles with the other jobs? Yes. Yes. They will all follow the E system. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same 
system that U.S. military uses. But what's rewarded on each rank is dependent on the um, archetype. Yeah. Yes. So, I know about engineer. What would be some of the other jobs that would be present? So, let me pull that up right now. So... Wait one minute. Okay. Kennedy is so slow opening up. So the um it would be engineer, rifleman, medic, heavy gunner, demolitions expert, mm -hmm. mortar crew, and tankers. Mm -hmm. And again, each one of those it's more of a starting point. You can expand ever which way after that. Mm -hmm. And the, now, with that, with that, with that in mind, it does it does it does sound like there's the possibility to venture into uh, into other jobs or even. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. It's the original place uh, um, test we did didn't have such a system and ended up with everyone having very similar characters, which just isn't any fun. Mm -hmm. So, so what? Give a rifleman a flamethrower. Have the medic uh, carry weapons, whatever. Well, everybody's gonna get shot. Is gonna get shot at one way or another. So best to ha best to have that sort of thing. Right. Um, yeah. Exactly. Now, when it comes to when it comes to skill, when it comes to skills, does does it mm -hmm. operate on the on the same um, on the same modifier approach that you have stats work on? Yes. Yeah. Um. Skills are very unique. It's very... It depends a lot on each specific skill. Mm -hmm. Just as a variety. But for the most part, yes. Yeah, that, that certainly makes sense. And... Now, when it comes to... When it comes to vehicles, what cha what changes between... Between um, making roles as, a indivi as an individual or... At, versus making roles when it comes to using the, using a vehicle like, say, a tank or a plane. Okay, yeah. So, since crewing a vehicle takes everyone in it to add to it, what happens is you get a um, crew check, which pretty much means everyone doing the main action role like normal and then add up their roles with the um extra crew members pretty much rolling as like how do I compare this? Similar to like a support action in D D, I guess. With a much higher um What, what did Dungeons Rising call their thing? Danger class. Danger class. Mm -hmm. So, in a really important system that I very much enjoy, 
is how each action has to be agreed upon by the commander. So, you won't have a whole tank crew arguing over each other, all doing their own thing. They have to agree or no actions are done. Right, that's that certainly makes sense, especially since, in well, when it, when it comes to a lot of tanks, there's no one man tank setup. <laughs> I mean, oh god, no. There, there were back in the er, back in the very early days when we we're talking about really, really, actually not, actually no, I take that back. Even the lightest of light tanks still had more, still had multiple people crewing them. I think the small screw I can think of right now. Are the Italian takeouts at a crew of two? I can't think of a one crewed vehicle. Uh, I can't. I can't. E I can't either, because a one crewed one a one crewed tank would have to have somebody operating both the guns and the and the engine at the same time. Oh my god, that sounds terrible. <laughs> and so much stress. Let's let's not forget that a tank is not just the is not just the big main gun, and that's another thing that you'd have to um, deal with because you've got to load that thing in. <laughs> I mean, auto oh, loaders yeah. have auto loaders have Give been attempted over the years, but it's not something that has really stuck around. Have you ever tried to pick up a tank shell? Those things can get heavy, and as you said, auto loaders. They've got their their drawbacks. <laughs> they could be better. Like, I think the I think the U.S. tried it in the '90s and it didn't stick. France has France has it with the Leclerc. Um, I think Russia's been keeping up with auto loaders. Yeah, supposedly, but when it comes to Russian development, um, I have to take everything with yeah. a grain of salt. You know, because there's plenty of um. Things that they say that they that they've been working on, but whether or not that's actually the case is up in the air. <clears throat> Armada. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> oh! Don't get me started on don't get me started on the Arma on the Armada <laughs> and or e even 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 the T even the T ninety. <laughs> oh yeah! Which... Oh yeah! I do, I do agree. I do agree with Pig when he had remarked that Russia hasn't made a decent tank since the '60s. Yeah, that's that is true. But the thing, but the thing is, is that all is that auto loaders have too have too many issues to really be to really be widely adopted. Um, yeah, and. Again, again, you'd have to again, you'd have to have somebody to re to reload the thing. Oh, exactly. I've never I've never held a tank shell, but I have held can I have held cannonballs at reenactments. Mm -hmm. And those those aren't exactly slouches. I I don't think I would I've ever held a cannonball, but let's just say like an AP round. From just I don't know a T thirty four small cannon comparatively still I think it's around one hundred and twenty pounds and then like the KV two stuff like that mm -hmm. sometimes you need two to three people loading. But the now when now you had also mentioned the um, the D twenty part of of the affair yeah. is is the would the D twenty be used for for certain types of combat or how would the D twenty be be used in deployment? 
So a D20 is very, very rarely used. Um, it's used in initiative, and there's a very, very specific rule that I can't even name off my head, and I wrote it. <laughs> um, where it uh, where it's used, and that rule has never come up in a session before. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the other things I saw when I was going through the materials was the concept of a war dice. Now, what what exactly does that entail? Because it gives there's the implication given that war dice ties to um, like gr troop morale and the like. So, the war dice are a very simple simulation of a combination of supply, morale, troop numbers, their equipment, etc., etc., etc. So, when you're in a larger battle, say, just multiple encounters on top of each other, rather than, say, a small surprise encounter or whatever. You'll use these war dice. So, for example, say these two factions are fighting. After... So one faction loses a supply truck, or greatly loses the battle. They will lose a war die... And then the winning faction will gain a war die based off of them gaining morale from such a huge victory. Once all war dice are lost, that's when the losing faction will start breaking up. People will start running or surrendering. They will have no supplies left. They're, they have no food left. So... War Dice is pretty much just a way to simulate all of that without the Game Master losing their head. Mm -hmm. Quite both literally and figuratively, and I'm get I've seen a lot of mili <laughs> I've seen a lot of military um, TTRPGs that try and take a, an extremely realistic approach when it comes to skill list and um, and the way the way health works. I'm guessing that you're going to be going a little bit more abstract with your approach. Yes. So, there's... I know exactly what games you're talking about. <laughs> I want this game to be accessible enough to get the message across and still be fun. So right now, there's only a physical health and a mental health bar. That's it. They work the same as any other um, HP system, with mental health being a bit different, mm -hmm. a lot easier to heal. Most of the damage you're going to be taking in the game is mental health damage, while physical health is a lot r less rare, or a lot more rare, I mean. Which that certainly makes sense. That certainly makes sense. The yeah. vibe, I'm, the or, vibe I'm getting is that you can, um, you can take some degree. You, the vibe I'm getting from what you're telling me is you can take some degree of damage, but you can't take, you can't make too many mistakes. Not at all. So, I, I can't pull up the exact statistic right now, but I think it's for every five thousand bullets shot. There's a hit. That really shows how little physical damage you will take. But the thing is, you have so much, or you have so little physical health that one shot can very easily end it. I've had players just, um, like, end up getting shot in the thigh, and that becomes a fatal wound later on. It's, it's a lot more common to worry about the near misses and what that 
does to your mental health rather than you physically. Mm -hmm. And with the, with that set, with that said, um, one of the other things that is that is talked about is a is you putting in a thirty sec thirty session plus session campaign. And I'm guessing, yep. I'm get, I'm guessing that is your equivalent to say the Great Pendragon campaign for King Arthur Pendragon of just this. Um, long form campaign that is taking place across the Second World War. So, the campaign follows the 117th Regiment mm -hmm. from before they were created and until the end of the war. It goes into the uh, um, Italian campaign and then the um, Normandy campaigns to the Battle of the Bulge. I, the average sessions amount have been around 35 to 40 sessions for the campaign. Um, it just depends on how fast you run it. Mm -hmm. And but yeah, it's it's a lot. <laughs> I'm give I'm I'm guessing that you also have. A, me a means in order to cre in order to create custom op custom opponents instead instead of or is it a case where you where PCs and NPCs are created with the same system? Yeah, yeah. There's um components. Um, that's all in the um the briefer's guide, which is the game master's guide, which hasn't fully finished being written yet. That will all be in there. Which def definitely makes sense. Um, no, oh, yeah. uh, with with that with that said, uh, what are you shooting for as far as a total page count? Total page count. Um, for the core rulebook, we're looking at around three hundred and fifty pages. Um, depends on when or how the writer gets back with their modules. Mm -hmm. and You've I'm seen it. it. The rules... Yeah, and I'm the guessing the... complete rules will be... Sorry, I'm guessing... What the we I'm guessing the lion's share of that, th of that 300 pages would be taken up by the modules. Yes. There are so many modules. <laughs> um... So the actual rules, right now what we have is um, 46 pages, I believe, with the ending being around 100 pages for the rules. And then plus the modules, equipment, skills, um, in general tips for running different characters, mm -hmm. it should go around 350. The campaign right now is looking around 100 pages, and the debriefer's guide being around 50. Mm -hmm. And I will. And what would you be shooting for as far as a release window? So, for the release, depending on how the Kickstarter goes, we've hit our goal, so we should be making it on time. Congratulations. Around everybody. late. Oh, thank. Yeah, we hit it today. It was great. I woke up this morning and we were at it. It was great. We should be releasing around, around late March. Which, it'd be funny as hell if you launched it on Mar on March the fourth. <laughs> I mean, I guess it would. 
um, the original plan was to release it on June. He's, you know, Normandy and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's not looking like that. I just, I just have to make that joke because it sounds like someone telling people what to do. Also, you could make a, you could make a joke about March, March fourth, and grab the PDF on that day. <laughs> we could. I'm gonna write that down right now. But all right, yeah. I will certainly be looking forward to it, and if you if you do end up making the March Fourth joke, I want credit. <laughs> you will be on the front cover. <laughs> but with with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens around here. Yeah, of course, it's been great. And. Anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here... I would love to. Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> and of course... Eh, oh, go ahead. No, no, what were you saying? And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness... And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>